You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hey guys, this is Steven. This is Derek. This is Ryan with Sajin. You're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to welcome Sajin. And they have released their third album entitled Roots of Proctor and available everywhere, including their music video for Crux. Check out singles Floodgates, Press to Death, and One of Us. And also, they have previous albums, and I'm going to announce these here, and they can let me know if these are... Right, but they include Mammoth and uh, Remastered of Tides of Succession. So, guys, welcome to the podcast, and how you guys doing? Doing awesome. Great. <laughs> did, I, did I get yeah. everything right there? Yeah. 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 That's, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Stephen, Derek, and we got Ryan on here with us. So we're going to jump right on into this, fellas. Third album, Roots of Proctor, is out right now what's the nucleus though guys that still keeps this band together and and moving right along um now it's it's i mean it's just all of us together uh before roots we we kind of we were cycling through a lot of people and we even had um derek's friend filled in for vocals on the album Um, but now we have we got a full band everything's clicking and so I, I really just consider it one one big thing now. Back in September, while working on Roots of Proctor, you did a cover of Lamb of God's Ruin. What led you to cover this song specifically? And was there any others that you guys want to do or no? Um, I would say uh, kind of Ruin and, and kind of Lamb of God as a, as a whole, um, especially my vocals, uh, we wanted to do a cover to kind of help bring in some traffic to the new album we were working on. Um, and Randy is one of my biggest influences when it comes to vocals. Um, and when it comes to the groove metal, um, Mammoth was definitely a groove metal album. Um, it had a, a lot of, you know, some technical drums, but it, our whole vibe is riff centric. So Lamb of God was a beautiful representation of like using rhythm to create that heavy environment. And so we're like, Hey, we, we want to, we want to represent kind of, you know, how important they were to us uh, in, in our development and, and the way we listen, the way we write. So um, we wanted to do some of the earlier material, which I think is their best material. Um, and I think we kind of talked about that uh, with the rest of the band, but ruin is, is one of my favorite songs by them. And um, when, you know, I think of vocal cadences, for instance, um, that's half the reason I wanted to do that song is because it gave me something to, to work with. And I was able to um, kind of do a little bit of changes when it came to the vocals. But I just love the way he he accents with the rhythm. So I agree with you 1000 percent, man. Lamb of God, their new stuff. I absolutely adore. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. How excited are you guys to have this third album, Richard Proctor, finally out and in the Sajin Music Library and just out and finally done with and be out there? We're very excited. <laughs> <laughs> now, this this one actually, the, the turnover time from when it the, the writing started compared to when we released it is a fraction of the time that it was for Mammoth. Mammoth mm. was like a five-year ordeal because we just couldn't find members uh proctor we um what was that maybe year and a half two years of about about a year and a half um i think it was november 2021 (laughs) i think is when i first started writing um 
my, my the lyrics and stuff, I believe. So maybe October. I can't quite remember. But it was it was really exciting just having this new sound, all the new guys, and and being able to to get this out and say, hey, this is what we are now. This is what you can look forward to. So that was that was really exciting to get it out. Plus the feedback and reactions from everybody has been so amazing. So that's that's been really great to hear. How close were you to just giving up on that album, Mammoth? Because since it took so long, I mean, were you, were you to the point where you're just like, I, I don't want to do this. I mean, this is not even worth it anymore. There were times, there were times when there were some uh, thoughts like that, but we, we stuck it out and right. um, released it. And we kind of released it in a way of like, maybe someone will hear it and be like, hey, do you guys need a vocalist? And then that exactly, that thing happened. <laughs> Ryan reached out on Instagram and was like, hey, can you send me uh, can you send me the instrumental track that you guys released off Mammoth and I'll, I'll try to put something on it just for fun. And then he sent it back and I was like, whoa, <laughs> sent it to the guys in there. And then he was like, well, I'm actually just I, I just decided I, I kind of want to get back into vocals and stuff. So do you guys want to vocalize? Yeah. Like, yeah, awesome. But how cool was that, though, Stephen, to to have somebody reach out on Instagram, especially social media now, how cool it is. Some of it's cool. I'll say some of it's cool. <laughs> but to actually find a lead singer on social media like that, because there's a lot of people out there, man, that can freaking well and, and deserve that shot. And they are out there on social media. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it was so random because we're, we're used to like Craigslist ads and <laughs> and band mix and stuff. I think we actually found Henry through band mix or yep. something similar. Right. And uh, that's what we were used to. So then when Ryan reached out, you know, I thought it would be fun to hear vocals on um, Coward, the instrumental from Mammoth. And uh, it definitely was fun. And then he would, he just like, it was just a big surprise. But it, it was it was really cool. This new album explores the dark and twisted atrocities committed during the infamous Salem Witch Trials. Where did you guys find the inspiration to say, let's, let's do this. And was this like a, a concept album possibly uh, while working on this album for this? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Steven, Steven can really kind of give you the, the rundown on kind of how the whole vision um, is for each album, each, you know, Sajin means say um, I believe in, in German. So uh, our whole, our whole goal is to tell stories. Um, and uh, Stephen came to me about kind of what uh, what he wanted to do with the whole Salem witch trials. And so for me, um, it gives us something to to write about and something for me to research, but also learn and then kind of loosely change and alter and make it cool. You know, just be use our creative minds. So um, though we're telling stories that really did happen um it's we leave room for interpretation if that if that makes sense and steven i'll let you kind of talk more about the whole story side of that um yeah we it was kind of we were at the point where we're like well what, what do we really write about i mean everybody writes about kind of the same stuff in metal a lot of the times which is fine um but you know i, I loved bands like Led Zeppelin and and bands that would kind of tell stories through their songs and everything, and uh, uh, so in the beginning of the band when when I made it, I decided, well, maybe I'll just do concept albums, and so each one is a concept album, and they all kind of like loosely connect into one bigger story. Um, <clears throat> so it's been fun though doing it that way because it helps helps with the writing and stuff trying to capture what's happening in the in the uh story at the time in the songs so um it's just fun for us to do it that way yeah i think it, it helps to have a framework to write the songs around um uh something that i've i've noticed and <clears throat> just my history of doing this in my own writing sometimes too is that you'll write a song and it'll be like but why, or like, what's the song about? Or, and then you're trying to find the meaning for the song after, and that can be um, a serious challenge. So it's kind of cool to do it the opposite way and say, no, this song is going to be about something. 
and mm-hmm. then have everything flow through that. And then you have some more cohesiveness, I think, within the the ideas and the, the music itself. Could we ever see just a regular album from Sajin? <laughs> or no? <laughs> I mean, they're pretty... Uh, it pretty much is a, a regular album. I mean, I think that there are there obviously are story beats behind it, you know. So if you're paying attention, I think that you you notice the story. But if you're not overtly focusing on it, you can totally experience the album just as a regular album as well. So I think it kind of captures um, the best of both worlds in that regard. Definitely. What has the new members brought to this band that may have been missing? Not knocking the other ones. I'm just saying, what have these new guys brought that uh, may have added some fire to Sajin? Mm-hmm. I'm interested. Well, it's, 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 it, it's definitely Ryan. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, not that, not that we, uh, right, exactly. Like you said, like, not that we were necessarily like, oh, you know. But, uh, but no, definitely Ryan's vocals have taken the, have really, I think, added like this um, X factor that we were um, that we were missing. Um, and you know, we went through a lot of you know vocalists in in, in the past, right. and um, you know, uh, um, you know, we got my friend um, Adam who lives in Washington to do vocals for Mammoth, but you know, he lives super far away, so it's just been you know really trying to find uh, been a struggle to really find the right guy to work with, and. Uh, you know, um, I mean, I think that Ryan is the uh, the complete package. You know, he's got talent. He's great as a front man. He's got a good work ethic, you know. <laughs> so um, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, you know, I, I couldn't I could definitely could not ask for a better vocalist for the band. You know? mm-hmm. All right, Derek and Ryan, I'm going to put you guys on the hot seat. And this is about Steven. <laughs> Gotcha. Would you guys say Steven is the heart of this band? Would you say he's the heart and soul of this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, um, we have like our genre, for instance, we don't have like a definite genre that you can put us in. We're a good mixture of everything. And a lot of that comes off of Steven's writing style, um, where we are very riff centric. I always say that. Um, but he he wants to include you know, Derek's crazy technical drum skills and, and he, he understands how to utilize them when he's structuring his writing. Um, and when it comes to just the general idea, um, this was birthed from Steven. And I feel like if, if I was to write this album, I would either make it too much like other music that, that people already hear um, where Steven has this, this ear that is different. And I mean, there's times where I tell him, Hey, like, I want this to be a little bit different and you know, that's all right. But at the end of the day, he's been able to figure out something that my brain hasn't been able to figure out yet. It's, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I don't know if I can say this. I'm a, I'm a slut for, uh, <laughs> breakdowns, um, you know, things like that. So, um, when it comes to Steven's style, um, we, he somehow figured out a way to use guitar riffs and re- kind of rebirth the fact that metal is, you know, guitar is a real instrument, not just a, a noisemaker anymore. Um, so it's been a unique journey that, that he's been able to, to find that um, a lot of us might not be able to, to cater to if we were the ones writing the base of this music. And I'm sure Derek, you have something to say onto that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's no, um, you know, there's no Sajin without uh, without Steven, you know, I mean, he, he comes up with the uh, really the whole, you know, base of the of the entire concept. Um, but at the same time, you know, I also do appreciate how uh, um, I feel like I'm allowed to express myself freely, you know, within the framework of what Steven has written, you know, so um, it's really just only um, it's like all the benefits of, of, uh, uh, of having, you know, uh, a great songwriter in the band, um, uh, without necessarily feeling, um, constrained on, on my end either. I'm still, I feel like I'm free to make the drums however I want and express myself freely. So, um, yeah, no, it's definitely been, uh, been good. What makes a great Sajin song? What 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 makes it, guys? You guys make these songs. What 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 does it have to have to say that's a Sajin song? 
Oh, that's a tough one. Mm. But a good one. I think I think what it is is uh is really having a good uh a good mix of uh you know some groovier parts and fast parts and getting those parts to all work together to tell a story throughout the song. You know, I think our strongest songs, in my opinion, really have that element to it, where you really get a sense of like an arc um happening, you know, even if you don't know what the lyrics are what's happening in the story there's like this sense of like something's happening or you know we're going through a journey with mm -hmm. the song and um and i think the language that we use for that is just having you know again groovier parts faster parts you know you know parts where the vocals really shine you know some guitar solos you know a couple like you know long longer drum fills you know we kind of have you know crafting it all all together very well I'm, said there, yeah. I was listening to Crux last night, and, and, and I like it. I like how everything is. and It's got its peaks and valleys, but yet it it it, it incorporates the, the sound of this band. I mean, and, and especially when I go back to list the Mammoth, I list the Mammoth some last night, and it, it's, the, it's the same stuff, but it's great. You know what I mean? It's all different factors of music, and I feel some bands don't do that. <laughs> It's just put stuff out there. Let's go. You know, I understand yeah. that people's going to be irrelevant. I understand because the way everybody, the, the way it is right now with EPs and stuff like that, but kudos for you guys who are still doing what you want to put out and say, this is our band. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think, um, I think that definitely it's it, with the way the music industry is now, um, there's so much focus on just, producing as much as possible you got to produce you know every day post it's post so, post produce. it's so easy everyone can do it at home now right right so but i think that it, it is really um tricky for to find a balance between those two right you want to you want to spend time working on your songs you know working on your craft making it perfect but at the same time like if you're not you know putting yourself out there often enough then you're going to get lost in the sea of a million people screaming like look at me look at me you know so um uh so i definitely think it's a tricky balance to to find so would you say that the ep route is not for this band just because the length of your songs the full length is is more appropriate for you guys uh, i me i i love eps um as a listener uh simply because I might not have, you know, an hour to sit there and listen to every song. And the way I like to listen is like if, if it's a four song EP, I want to listen to the title, the opening track in order. Uh, that's that's how I think a lot of bands like to write music. And I appreciate that. And it's how we wrote Roots of Proctor. Um, but sometimes it's, you know, getting a listener to be able to listen to even one song can be a challenge sometimes. So, and in order for them to listen to a full uh, album, that's a, that's a huge commitment. So I, on my end, my preference, I would love to release an EP uh, eventually, but when it comes to the storytelling, like we would want to make sure that we're maybe telling a short story or, or something, something of the sense that, you know, and we, we all, have different opinions maybe on that but that's that's my opinion i think that'd be cool yeah what about you guys do your own e ep under the name of sajin Derek does his own ep under the name of sajin steven does his ep under the name of sajin uh, oh. oh that'd be kind of oh. cool like huh. like i like we all have our own chapter or something right like i, I, I i've heard that as a uh as a concept where you have multiple different musicians under like kind of one umbrella and you sort of release music, but you kind of have the main. Um, I mean, you know, it sounds it sounds interesting. I think it would it would take a like a radically different approach to the way that we, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. do things <laughs> to do that. But it's not something like a, as a concept, though. It's like it's something I feel like I would participate in or give it a shot. You know, like oh yeah, sure. You know, like if it comes up in the future. But 
Yeah, I'd be asking Steven, hey, dude, can you like just record the instrumental for me? And the next thing you know, we're just doing a Sajin album. Right. right. I, think, I, I think if we did that with Sajin, it would just end up being just the yeah. same. I'd be like, hey, guys, I finished the EP of yeah. thing. And then everyone would be like, dude, we started yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's true. Yeah. It's, it's true. All right. So, what led the track Crux to be the first song released off this album? Technically, it was, or, yeah, we released one of us first. So, so one of us is on the album. So, all of our singles are on the album, but we released one of us first, uh, then Pressed to Death, I yeah. believe, and then Floodgates. Yes. Right. And then we released Crux because we were actually going to release Crux a little bit sooner, but um, where we, we had the full production of the music video. Um, it took a little bit longer because we filmed a lot. We did it, that whole process. Garrett Barefoot did an amazing <laughs> job working with us and, and the whole team uh, putting together that music video. We there was a lot of filming and a lot of moving parts. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't rushing that. So we ended up uh, releasing Crux as a music video um, the night before the album dropped, just kind of as like a celebratory um, timing. And that way people could watch the video and then be like, all right, I want more. And then holy crap, a whole new album just released by them. I have all this content, all this uh, music to listen to now. So, was there a track that you were working on that totally ended up sounding different than it was intended to when it's first brought to the table? Yeah. Well, to on, on my end, um, there was a few songs that, um, came to life. Um, in Oath they conjure, uh, was one of the first ones that, that we put together. Um, that song ended up, I didn't love it. Um, when we were, you know, like halfway through the writing process and then towards the end, like the final product just like literally came down to the very last master that we got. I was like, wow, I actually really <laughs> dig this now. Um, yeah. and then, uh, pressed to death. Um, I redid the entire vocals on that, like five months after I wrote it. Cause I was like, all right, no, no, this needs to be scrapped. Uh, just didn't it the album evolved um, in our writing style did because I joined the band. Um, Henry joined the band and I was trying to develop. How am I going to be going to be placed in this band? Like, what do I want to do with the vocals? So even my vocal style, um, there were certain things that I wanted to kind of cater to. And the more I listened to the the demo tracks, I was like, you know, I, I think I, I want to try this. I want to test out. I want to experiment. And luckily the album, I, I gave them crap almost every week that the album wasn't out yet, but it was kind of a good thing because it gave me that extra time to do those changes. And, you know, it time was on our side, believe it or not. So I will you know swallow that pill, but um, <laughs> I, I'm really happy with the way that the songs ended up coming out. To add on to that, um, I think there were a lot of cool places with the vocals that changed because uh, of Derek, when he brought his drums, mm -hmm. his new drums into the, the demos and everything. And that it just, the additions of the vocal, the new vocals, plus the new drums, it, it almost sounded like completely new songs at times. Mm -hmm. And it, it, a lot better too. So mm -hmm. Way better. <laughs> that was really exciting towards the end. <clears throat> Any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on the on this album, guys? I mean, I know you guys have your personal favorites, but are there any that stick out for the each of you? Maybe. Oh gosh, gosh, which one is my favorite? I don't know. I've been, been playing them so much. I mean, honestly, I really like. Uh, I think Bishop has been really growing on me. Um, you know, like that. I think that one at first it was like kind of a lot to digest. Um, but you know, the more that I, you know, play the songs and, you know, listen to them, you know, that, that one's definitely been, I can feel that one like growing, you know, mm -hmm. my appreciation for that song growing and growing. Um, and, uh, some of the other tracks, you know, where, I mean, you know, they're just like with any album or any music, there's some that have really strong first impression and then, and then you get kind of tired of them as it goes on. But then there's some where it's just like, 
I don't necessarily where like I like them, but they're not my favorite at first. But then like, you know, as time goes on, like yeah. my appreciation grows. And I think that that's, I can definitely see that with, with Bishop and, um, you know, Burial as well. I really like that. I really like that track. Like the end of the album has really been growing on. You stole both of mine. Freaking great. <laughs> <laughs> I really like uh, Floodgates and Press to Death, I think. And Crux. I don't know. Starts listing that album from <laughs> like all that all that album. <laughs> Bishop. You know, it's a codger. No, probably probably floodgates and and uh press to death. Was the track listing placement important for this album? Very much so. Cause yeah, uh, it started it was kind of like, you know, uh, uh, the songs were in order of kind of uh, what's the word <clears throat> in time chronologically but then uh, um, I think Ryan and, and us and we, we kind of talked about well maybe we could put this one here first and then um, this one here and it actually came out pretty cool uh, the way it's structured now is yeah um, and I'll add to that real quick not to interrupt but um, like winter was supposed to be higher on the album um but we felt that it would have been nice to kind of bring it towards the bottom and that transition from winter into burial is my probably my favorite transition on the album um where you have like this kind of soft i wouldn't say soft the song's not soft but a little bit lighter uh feeling of a song into like a really like technical groovy heavy burial song um but yeah the the way the uh, like bishop for instance is written about bridget bishop who was the first um death in uh the same witch trials she was the first one that was killed um and it goes in order so pressed to death um is about the pressing of uh giles cory is it cory giles i i always end up <laughs> switching them around um but uh yeah he uh he ended up uh, getting pressed to death with with stones um and so each like the killings are in order um the this the, the build up and everything is all in order uh and so when you listen to the album we're taking you through the story um and we want to make sure that that everything was was delivered in in a certain way that that made sense but also you can be open to interpretation all right, so any songs that didn't make this album or anything that didn't make this album, we can see on another album possibly or maybe just a one-off single down the road, maybe? Uh, there are a lot of songs that didn't make it, but <laughs> I don't think we'd use any in the future. Yeah, if I, if I may be so bold, um, there's the songs that didn't make it, there's like a reason they, they didn't yeah. make it. You know, and I think I think we'd rather look forward and, and write new stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. There might be like stolen riffs from <laughs> those yeah. songs, the ones that worked. Yeah, yeah. recycle the ideas. All right, Stephen, what's the growth musically that you've seen from yourself um, since the debut album Tides of Succession up till now working on this album with these guys? Uh I think it's it's been pretty big. Um, uh, thinking back, writing tides uh, is just very different in my personal music taste of what I was listening to at the time. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, Mammoth was a lot different because I, I I've said it before, but it, it's it kind of when I writing mammoth was more of kind of trying to write what I thought people wanted to hear hmm. tides and roots was more of like, okay, what do I like? What do I like listening to? What sounds good to me? If something's weird in this song and people don't like it, oh, well, at least I can listen to it and enjoy it. Um, but the, the biggest thing is just, just, um, exploring different ideas with melodies, I think, with the guitars and stuff. And then um, 
just having bigger sections instead of just riff after riff after riff. There's more in-depth music sections with melodies and harmonies and stuff like that, chord progressions. Um, Tides was just, oh, I like that riff. I like this riff. Okay, cool. So um, I'm happy with how everything's going since then. Let me throw this out there. Do you guys like seeing the feedback from, from the fans who check out your music and, and especially the ones who say, you know, I think there's too much of this. We need to trim here. Do you like that? Do you take that in consideration now? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, we have a issue with like people actually reach out to us. Hey, we want to do a review of your album and then they do a review of our album, but they don't give us any constructive criticism. It's like at the end of the day, um, it's our craft and we want to make it the best it possibly can be. Um, and if you're not open to criticism, you're, you probably don't care enough. Um, in, yeah. in, in, in my, in my opinion, um, we, we like to see, we love the positive stuff. And I mean, this album in particular, it's like, we're getting some amazing feedback every day, whether it's a vocal comparison or, Oh, album of the year, album of the year. Yeah. Uh, when, when I read that stuff, I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool cool that you know this small band from north carolina is getting you know that type of feedback but at the end of the day um you know pigs get really really fat when you keep feeding them and uh <laughs> sometimes you need to pull the food away and make them work for it so um definitely like i like the negative a little bit you know as long as you're not mean no <laughs> <laughs> yesterday i saw someone commented we had um we had a YouTube channel post the album recently and uh, somebody commented saying, Oh man, I can't listen to this, this music. It sounds like, mm. it sounds like there's a wooden block in front of a speaker. It sounds, the mix is so terrible. And so I was like, Oh shoot. <laughs> 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 I could do a better job next album. <laughs> but yeah. Well, you know, no matter what you do, there's going to be, there's going to be somebody, you know, that's it. I'm like, oh, you know, I mean, probably someone who's never that. I mean, you think that guy's ever mixed an album before? Like, I mean, maybe, but like, probably not. Yeah, um, I, sh I should yeah. comment. Let's see your mixes. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I actually think it's actually my personal goal uh, that um, Sajin has more um, haters, actually, you know, because I think <laughs> that that's how we'll, you know what I mean? Because, like, because I think that that actually means, like, you know, like if we have a a bunch of haters i'll be like oh wow we really made it you know what i mean like yeah <laughs> yeah i know what you mean because it because it's uh it's it's uh because when you're when you're when you're coming up you know no one's gonna no one's gonna no one's gonna hate on you right you know there's just kind of like this um almost a rubber band effect when you're really small people lift you up and then if you start getting too successful people try to try yes, to bring sir. you back down so if we got people trying to bring us back down and then it's like oh we're doing we're doing good <laughs> Well, look, look at the black album from Metallica. Look how many people shit on it. But guess what? It's still selling 5,000 copies or about five or 10,000 copies a week. So, I mean, I think more people <laughs> shit on Metallica than almost any other band. And they are by far the most successful metal band of like probably all, all time. I mean, I don't know. I guess there might be a couple others that, that you could list up there. But yeah, I mean, I mean when, they, like, when they released that first single from their album, I saw maybe 20 different accounts that I have on Instagram and just, you know, Oh, people you made videos, you might be interested in whatever, all people learning the guitar. Riff. Lux Turner. Yeah. In a video. It's like, it's like so many people hate this band, but dude, they just made <laughs> thousands of people pick up their guitar and want yes, to learn. All right. My Which favorite band of all time. Day when I, you know, I would love it if the riffs I write inspire someone to pick up a guitar and learn it, play it. Like that is a dream goal of mine, personally. My favorite band of all time, that Lux Eternal song, man, is fucking badass. So good. <clears throat> and for those who say, man, they, they still can't break. Yeah, they still can. I'm sorry. But this, this song, is. I can't wait to 72, 72 seasons come out. Um, Man. And, um, I hope that it's good. I'm sure it will be, but I hope they just don't, you know, like, here you go. And the rest is like, eh. 
Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Metallica. Like it Don't happens sometimes. That's very true. That's very true. So th- this album, was it produced in-house, or did you have somebody else to help produce on it? <clears throat> it was mixed by me. And then um, Garrett Barefoot, who did the music video for Crux, he did the mastering um, for the full album. Mm-hmm. Front and back album cover artwork was done by Brian the Mister, 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 however you say it. <laughs> How was work with him? But did he get exactly what you guys were looking for? So he, so it's actually um, the art is AI art, um, and it just popped up on my my facebook feed one day and we were we were actually talking to a few different artists i think one we were ready to spend like <clears throat> how much like it was a it was pretty a good amount I mean, a couple, I mean a couple hundred bucks i mean what you would normally <laughs> expect to spend for i think it was like 700 yeah i think it was like 700 it's gonna be a full like oil painting and everything and then literally the next day the thing pops up and i was like oh man that image is so cool and then I saw another one, and then so I sent a couple of them because he kind of just he posts like twenty pictures, like just dumps them on Facebook, and so we found those two, and got it from him, and we were able to use the money that we didn't spend on that to uh, use for the music video. So that helped out a lot in that. Um, looking back, I'm I'm really happy we went that way because I know yeah. a lot of people don't like. AI art and all the big controversies like that's another comment we get <clears throat> like hate comment we get on um different sites and stuff like youtube and whatever people will be like man we even had a review they were like i don't know why they chose to use ai artwork and whatever and it's like i don't know yeah i, I, think- I should i should add to well not to interrupt but it's AI art, but it's it's um, edited AI art. So oh, they yeah. generate different pieces and and put it together. So it's like somebody who is taking you know different inspirations from AI and then manipulates it to create what they really want. So in a sense, it's mm-hmm. it's AI, but it's a little bit. It's like an altered AI. Right. My, my understanding of it is like it's kind of similar to how some people would. And this is there's like an established uh, practice of, you know, taking um, photographs and then enhancing those photographs artistically, um, except yeah. it, we're not it's not enhancing a photograph. Now you're just enhancing AI art. Um, and I, I, I kind of like I understand that, you know, the AI art thing can be is controversial. And probably if I was someone who was trying to sell my digital paintings, online Mm. for five hundred dollars i would be probably incensed at the ai art like oh man like this is gonna you know because it's like it because it is possible to like you know make quality art that people will pay for now and then it doesn't take the ai artist or even the enhancer nearly as much time than handcrafting the stuff and now it's like oh they're just selling all this you know they can produce way more and they sell it cheaper and so it, it it would probably be I understand why people are upset about it. Um, although I do think AI art has its own limitations and probably they will reach a point where there's so much AI art on the market that there's like the saturation and people will crave something else. And then, then those artists will, will, uh, you know, I think have more opportunities then, but, um, I think that it's, uh, I mean, I, I guess I can kind of, I can see why people are upset about it is what I'm, what I'm saying. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Sajin's third album entitled Roots of Proctor. It's available everywhere. So you can't say you don't know where it's at because it's everywhere. And I will have all the links posted in this interview when it goes out. So, guys, how can folks stay in touch with Sajin? Buy this new album, tour dates, merchandise, all this good stuff when it happens. How can you do that? Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. But mainly Facebook and Instagram. Yes. (laughs) Follow us on every every platform we do have a link tree it has all of our links everything like that um but yeah and i did give you guys a follow on on youtube because uh i definitely want to check out some more of your guys stuff and Bandcamp, Bandcamp too good stuff oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. before i let you guys go would you care to do a promo for my show let's go let's yeah, do sure. it hey guys this is steven this is derek 
This is Ryan with Sajin. You're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up. And you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link. And you definitely, definitely want to subscribe to that YouTube link because we've got great, great interviews on here. Great interviews on here. Also, get out and check out Roots of Proctor. Pick up this album, Roots of Proctor, for sure, by Sajin. You will not be disappointed. So, guys, thank you so much for doing the podcast, and you're welcome on here anytime you want to. Appreciate it, man. Awesome. Love yeah, thanks. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Great interview. You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.